Does it seem like you just get filled with air after you eat? And does this air just seem to cause belching, bloating, and gas? If so, low stomach acid may be the cause. What you may not know is that low stomach acid can also be the cause for a lot of unexpected symptoms that may really surprise you. What's up everyone, my name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi. I am a functional medicine practitioner, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients with bloating and gas and then other undesirable GI symptoms as well. This video is gonna cover a topic I've definitely covered in the past, which is having low stomach acid. It's obvious that having low stomach acid can be the cause of belching, can be the cause of bloating, can be the cause of gas. However, low stomach acid can also be the cause for a variety of other unexpected symptoms. In this video, I'm gonna discuss three things. First is five unexpected signs of low stomach acid. Second is five things you may be doing that may lead to having low stomach acid. And then third is a quick at home test you can do that's free that can help you estimate what kind of stomach acid levels you may have. All right, let's go. First topic is five unexpected signs of low stomach acid. Number one is painful heartburn and GERD. And this is probably opposite of what you might expect. I feel like the normal thought around heartburn is you have too much stomach acid when in reality, it's just in the wrong place. When you have low stomach acid, food kind of sits in your stomach and intestines longer. It maldigests, putrefies, produces gases, and can force open that lower esophageal sphincter. And when that happens, you can kind of get the contents of the stomach comes up, is in the esophagus, causes symptoms. Number two is asthma. And this kind of ties into just having poor digestion as well. When food's not broken up enough in the stomach from low stomach acid, larger particles enter the small intestines. And there where the immune system is, they kind of sense these larger particles, don't recognize them, causes an immune response, causes inflammation, and that's one way you get that chronic inflammatory immune response that can lead to asthma. Number three is acne, and this kind of goes off the same dynamic I explained for, for the asthma, where there's just a lot of immune system reaction and a lot of inflammation, and it manifests in a lot of different ways. One of them happens to be acne. Fourth is thinning of the hair and or nails. Amino acids and protein are necessary in order to maintain strong hair and nails. And if you have low stomach acid, they're not able to break down these proteins down into little amino acid building blocks. And for that reason, you can get thinning of hair or weakened nails. And number five is osteopenia and osteoporosis, having weakened bones. Calcium is very critical, obviously, for having strong bones. I feel like that goes without saying. And stomach acid, though, is very responsible for being able to digest foods that have calcium in them, break them down, and be able to absorb that nutrient so the bones can stay strong. If you're continuing to have symptoms, chances are you're pretty frustrated. To be clear, though, there's many practices that we do on a daily basis that do lead to having low stomach acid. And I'll discuss five of them right here. Number one might be the biggest one out of all five of them is taking medications that intentionally lower stomach acid. These are proton pump inhibitors such as Prilosec, Omeprazole, Nexium, Prevacid, etc. Histamine 2 receptor blockers such as Zantac, Ranididine, and Pepsid, and then antacids such as Tums or Gaviscon. If you're like many people that you take these daily or you used to take them or you know a bunch of people that take them regularly, they're extremely common, millions of people take them and they're a multi-billion dollar industry in the United States every year. They were intended to only be used for several weeks in order to heal stomach ulcers, but now they're in everyone's weekly pill boxes and are being taken regularly with multivitamins. Second thing is eating hygiene. This includes drinking a lot of water or fluids during meals, eating while stressed, not chewing. I actually made an entire bloating and gas free e-guide, which is in the link in the description below, you can get it. Uh, because you can read it, I'm not gonna go into a dramatic amount of detail in this video, but if you are curious and wanna know more, go ahead and click on that link and you'll be able to read the whole e-guide. Number three is high stress. Being chronically stressed just puts your body in this fight or flight mode. Do you think your body cares about being able to digest food and get nutrients from it when it's worried about its survival? No, it does not. Therefore, a lot less emphasis is placed on producing stomach acid. So if you lower stress, you can increase the amount of stomach acid. Number four is eating a very low protein, high carbohydrate and processed food diet. The body needs certain nutrients such as magnesium, vitamin B12 and zinc to produce stomach acid. 
in general, good one ingredient whole protein sources, such as animal proteins, nuts, seeds. These are good sources of either one or more of these nutrients that I aforementioned. As a quick note, I'm not talking about eating salami or other types of unhealthy processed deli meats like that. So these nutrients are often found more in those type of foods. And as a vicious cycle type of dynamic, these nutrients also already require strong stomach acid to be absorbed. So if you're already low, it's even harder to get these nutrients absorbed into your body. Hope that makes sense. So in summary, food is more important than just calories. Nutrients also are a major factor. And put it simply, this is why eating a long-term processed food unhealthy diet can make you sick and lead to symptoms. And number five is just living. And I say this a little bit as a joke because you can't do anything about it, but it is true that the older you get, the lower your stomach acid levels will be. So although this can happen to anybody at any age, if you are somebody in your 60s or older, it is more likely that you will have lower stomach acid levels. So if you didn't know this already about me, before I became a functional medicine practitioner, I worked as a pharmacist in a traditional retail pharmacy setting. If you've ever been in a pharmacy, you know that they're typically very high paced. For me personally, I literally did not have an opportunity to sit and take a break and eat meals throughout the day. I loved and still love lifting weights. And because of that, it was very important to me that I got in the right amount of calories, right amount of macronutrients every day. The only way that I could find to do that was to make smoothies, bring them to work, and that would be my, my lunch and dinner or breakfast and lunch, depending on the shift I was working. Although the smoothies contain all healthy foods, the matter in which I was consuming them and just my general eating hygiene was very bad. So this is actually what I would do. Twice a shift, I would take about uh, one liter of smoothie or about 32 ounces. And I basically chug it, as fa drink it as fast as I can, which would take probably 30 seconds or so. But by doing this, I immediately became very full after drinking them. I just consumed a ton of water with that food and I'm consuming them in a very high stress environment as well as I'm still trying to fill orders and do 10 other things at the same time. This definitely contributed negatively to me having bloating and gas symptoms. Was this the only thing that was causative and causing me issues? No, I had SIBO previously from a bout of food poisoning. However, chugging these smoothies twice a day under high stress and a lot of liquid definitely was doing nothing to help my bloating and gas symptoms. Okay, now we're on to the final segment, the baking soda test. So this is a quick and easy way to kind of get an estimation of your stomach acid levels. And in order to do it, we use regular baking soda, same one you'd use for cooking or white knot. Make sure it's not baking powder, but baking soda. Baking soda is made of sodium bicarbonate. So when this enters your stomach and it mixes with the stomach acid, it gives off carbon dioxide gas. When we do the tests, we're gonna look for how long it takes in order to start burping after drinking the solution of the baking soda. In order to do this, take a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, spill a little bit, oh well, stir it up. And then this should be in about four ounces of cold water and you're gonna wanna drink this first thing in the morning when you wake up for best results. It's about two o'clock here right now and I've already eaten twice, I ate about half hour ago. So I'm not actually gonna drink this for the purpose of this test because the results probably wouldn't be as accurate as they should be. For the results of it, after you drink the solution, start a timer immediately. If it takes over three minutes for you to start burping from after you drank the liquid, then it's possible you may have too low of a level of stomach acid. If the burps happen before three minutes, there's a better chance that you have a sufficient level of stomach acid. Now, these time measures aren't exact and absolute. Keep in mind, this is a very basic test and some info online does say that burping should happen within two minutes or so. Kind of depends where you look. Anyways, if you think you may have low stomach acid, give this free and easy test you can do right at home a try or basically free. I think this costs like $1. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of this now because I don't bake, but here we are. Give it a try. That is everything for today. Thank you for watching. If you are still struggling with unwanted GI symptoms, such as bloating and gas, send me a message on my website at drdanielrichardi.com. There's a link in the description below under the section that says work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I offer a free 30 minute consultation and then stay tuned for new videos to come out. I post a new full length video every Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time. And now I'm also posting a YouTube short 15 second to 60 second video weekly as well. Take care, have a great week.